At Projectum, we created a model-driven power app called PowerPPM. It contains everything a PMO could dream of. And with the recent updates from Project for the Web and the continuous upgrades that we're going to see in the future, we thought it would be the best to combine the two worlds of PowerPPM and Project for the Web. So let's dive in into PowerPPM with Project for the Web. So this is the home page or landing page of Power PPM. Every aspect in this application is customizable. For instance, this currently looks at a green screen uh, where we also have organizations that have a blue screen or company specific icons and images to represent their way of working. We have projects, programs and portfolios Seeing as we're going to focus on project for the web, let's dive into our projects. Right from the start, I'm navigated to my active projects. As a project manager, I wouldn't want to be bothered by all the projects that are in the organization. I would just focus on my own personal projects. So let's have a look. There's also all projects and closed project, and you can create multiple views yourself. If we navigate to all projects, for instance, we can see that there's a set of 18 projects in total in this instance of Power PPM as well. Here we can see that Peter Kestnels and Christian have been working on the schedule, Simon as well. There's multiple project managers and some of them have filled in budgets or benefits and uh, there's even an ROI if benefits and budget has been filled in. There's a type of project for us, this project, the ELO project, it's going to be a transformative project type. And they're aligned with a portfolio and a program. We'll dive into that a little bit later, but let's navigate to my ELO project. So from the start, you'll see on top information advanced. And this is because there's additional values that we as Projectum provided based on top of the basic information form that you get with Project for the Web out of the box. If you have Project for the Web and you navigate to make.powerapps.com, you'll see a project icon and that project icon will provide you with a summary, which is similar to this one, and a tasks tab. So let's get back to the information advanced because there's, there's more information in here. There's a justification set with free text. There's a business link to the pro program and the portfolio. There's effort and you'll see that these are locked because the effort will come from Project for the Web itself, uh, just as the planned finish, which is also part of the schedule. The default work calendar is in place here. Some organizations might opt for a other work calendar that also includes their own time off, for instance. Now here you see a little calculator. That means that data is coming from somewhere else and is being recalculated on a timely basis. Now where did this budget come from? We have a tab here called financials and it contains our financial grid. This financial grid is fully customizable once again. It currently looks at quarters and we also have a year option as well as a month option. Currently, it looks at CAPEX and OPEX, but there's options to include more detailed level where you have your internal or external resource costs, for instance, or license costs and, and apparatus or machines. We have budget and actuals, and maybe you have a financial system that you would like to hook up to the actuals. We have done this multiple times at our customers as well where a financial system will be populating the actual values aligned with the financial grid here. You can add years if you would like to. And so uh, by doing so, you can fill out a nice um, total budget and total benefits overview. And when we know the overview of benefits and budget, we can also create a ROI value. And if you are a frequent visitor of the channel, you know that I like risk matrices. We have one that is incorporated within Power PPM and it contains the option to create risks by clicking on the side pane. This side pane can be populated with, once again, 
custom values. I, for instance, like the escalate button, where if it's triggered, it will automatically send a warning signal and you can hook up Power Automate to that and automatically create an issue if you would like to, or automatically create a email notification to a manager, for instance. I'll just click cancel here and I'll discard the changes. But suffice to say, you can zoom in and look at, for instance, the top risk or one of these yellow risks as well, or look at the name of low risk. And if I want more detail in my risk, I can navigate to the risk itself and maybe start populating category or assign this to someone else. There's also an option to do close dates, mitigation plan, contingency plan, and maybe I would like to add some documents while I'm at it. I'll click save and close, and the information is represented in the lower subgrid, where you will see the name of Eric Krom, and Eric Krom is a colleague of mine uh, that also works in the Dutch office of Projectum. And as you can see, this is fully aligned with the Azure Active Directory. I can send him emails, I can chat with him on Microsoft Teams. Apart from that, any of these other tabs are customizable. I, I could, for instance, just lose the lessons learned. Uh, one other thing that I really like is the KPI status, where you have different status logs uh, compared to the dates that they were actually happening. So I can create another one where there's many changes and this turns up red as well, or I can say that everything is good. And this is a third status update. And I click on new status update report and I'll click save and close. And that shows up green. But we're not here to talk only about Power PPM. We're also talking about Power PPM and its connection to Project Photo Web. As you can see, there's a schedule tab here and that will open up Microsoft Project. There might be a pop-up showing that you need to authenticate. And here we are with a familiar screen with the grid view, with phases, tasks assigned to, and we can add the columns for effort and effort remaining. We can add different people to this, uh, this list as well. I can find myself or can uh, find Peter Kestenals, for instance. And as you know from project, you can add a group or just assign this to Peter. The value is increased now for the amount of effort that is actually aligned with the project. So if I click save and close, I would expect new effort to show up here. And here we see just that. We have effort, 400 hours, and there's a lot remaining because. So that's it for a single project. But as I mentioned during the beginning of this session, there's also a program and portfolio to be aware of. So if we click on first program, we get a higher up level of granularity. And we can see that the ELO project has a KPI that's green. And here we have a well-described uh, orange KPI and the first and fourth project. They're all part of this program. Now, you would like to see them in a schedule where every one of these projects is represented. So navigating to schedule, you'll see a solution that Projectum provided where not only the program is visible, but all the underneath uh, but all the underlying projects as well. Now here we see the ELO project and I can navigate to it. And from the start, from there on, I can start interacting with the project as I would do normally. I might even want to update the schedule from here and navigating back to my programs, I would see this trickle down directly into the first program. Navigating to schedule, opening up the first schedule, I'll see the project here. And in this example, I don't see any progress, but I do have that in the portfolio overview. 
Clicking on the first portfolio, I see my portfolio project again. First project, um, I see my project again. And in here, we have something called a roadmap. We don't call it a schedule anymore because it's not a schedule for the portfolio, but it is a roadmap of everything that's underneath this portfolio. I can open that up. We have two schedules that are directly aligned to the portfolio, but we have also a large list of projects that are part of the program and thereby part of the portfolio. So if I open up that, I can see the ELO project again, and I can see the progress that the project has made already. Now, if Gantt charts aren't your forte, but you would like to see something more agile minded, we also have a board view. And in here, we have a focus on the type of projects that we're running. Remember that the ELO project was part of a transformative project type. Here you see just that. We can see the progress that the project is making, and we see that the green icon is in there as well. We see that it's part of the first program. If I select it, I can drag and drop that to the grow, run, or to be the determined type of project. If I set this to grow and I navigate to the project by going to the portfolio details, click on the ELO project, I will see that the type has changed now to grow. Now I hope this was a nice demo. If in case you want to have a deep dive demonstration of what Power PPM with Project for the Web could do for you and your organization, there's a QR code on screen now. You can scan that or you can navigate to the link down below in the descriptions. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Power PPM and Project for the Web. I'm very excited and looking forward to more customers adopting Project for the Web through Power PPM.